It's Valentine's Day and there's no better time to take a look at the romantic side of music. This video is on the top 10 best love songs in rock. There's a lot of classic rock on this list along with a few more recent entries. So grab your Valentine, sit back, and let's go through what I think are the top 10 best. I know my Valentine's excited. Number 10. Some of you out there might be saying at your screen, what is this cheese doing here? Well, I stand by it. Cheap Trick Simple Song nails it on many levels. It's not lyrically deep or overly moving, but it doesn't need to be. In the age of disco, Cheap Trick came in trying to make fun of all that by making a cheesy love song with a rock edge. They just didn't expect it to be a hit in Japan and make the song a sensation after performing it live. As for the original recording, yeah, it's okay. But when the band performed it live at Budokan, it became something special, to the point where no one cares about the original recording and even Cheap Trick prefers the live version from 1978. The simple lyrics and catchy theme make the song memorable, but when you hear just how great Rick Nielsen is on guitar, it'll blow you away. In less than three minutes, he shreds better than some metal guitars through an entire album. Whether it's romantic love or just wanting attention from someone special, I Want You To Want Me really gets that vibe in an innocent and simple form, desperate for that attention from the one you can't get enough of. But hopefully the person that wants you is someone who isn't obnoxious and actually treats you with respect. Oh, I treat you like a queen. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Number nine. When people hear the name Slipknot, they instantly think of masks and screaming. That's a totally fair assessment. But many Slipknot fans will gladly tell you that Snuff is one of the best love songs ever. Coming from All Hope Is Gone, Corey Taylor originally wrote out an idea for lyrics and members of Slipknot laid out a backtrack. It was all downhill from there. When asked about the song after it became a single, Corey Taylor said, This is the slow one. It's another personal one. Again, not naming names. It's about someone who helped me through a lot, and I thought she felt the same way that I did, and then she really let me down. At the same time, it was good that she did, because it was a final push to be figuring out myself. The lyrics are pretty self-explanatory. On the music side, this is a ballad where the guitar doesn't overtake the rest of the song and the music helps to build the emotion. It's not a standard verse-chorus-verse format. It's creative, it's deep, and it's powerful. Whether you're a fan of Slipknot's absolute insanity or not, it's hard to deny that Snuff is a wonderful type of sadness. The line of I don't deserve to have you really hits as you hear someone's having to move on by any means necessary. Sometimes love hurts and it can end badly, but that doesn't mean it's an end to everything. I don't deserve to have you. Yeah, I don't deserve you either, but for different reasons. Because you embarrass me. Well, for starters, you refuse to wear pants! Number 8. Guns N' Roses was able to stick around and be a top man while hair metal, glam metal, and other trends were fading and grunge was surging. A song like Sweet Child of Mine is one reason they went to the top in the late 80s and stayed there among so many bands in the early 90s. Axl Rose wrote this song about his girlfriend Erin Evely and was inspired by Leonard Skinner's sound. It was a quick write and even though Slash has gone on to say he really doesn't like the song because he doesn't like what it represents, it's the only Guns N' Roses song to go number one in the US. Crazy to think also that one of the most memorable solos ever from one of the greatest guitar Taurus ever is a song that the man doesn't even like.
Axel's delivery is loud and energetic, which is something that he's great at. His voice on the song title being sang is infectious. This isn't the deepest song lyrically, but what hits is that nostalgia for someone you love and just the thought of that person makes you feel better. The Where Do We Go Now closing sequence also brings up an interesting end. Whether it was intentional or not, it does make you think about what's next after being in love. There are ups and downs and I always think of Where Do We Go Now as the question of what's the next step when you can't get enough of someone. It's not overly complicated, and from what I understand, it was all mostly written in a day. But Guns N' Roses had lightning in a bottle with Appetite for Destruction. Sweet Child of Mine was one of the reasons. It's a love song, it's got great guitar work, it's got memorable lyrics, and Axel lets it all out. Number 7 Speaking of hair metal, there were a lot of songs to choose from, for better or worse, but this one is a bit more special both for its meaning and delivery. Hearing that classic line of Don't Know What You've Got Till It's Gone being belted out by Tom Kiefer is impossible to forget after the first listen. Of all the hair and glam metal bands that wrote power ballads about love in the 80s, it's Cinderella that really made the most memorable one and hit out of all the right notes. The verses really go unheard for the most part when you compare it to the title being screamed, but there is good writing structure for a song here that many people don't pay attention to because... well, because it's glam metal. The meaning is defined in the title and it is embellished throughout the song. True regret. Misery at not having someone in your life anymore. Completely throwing out the notion of it's better to have loved and lost than never have loved at all. The song goes from quiet to loud in the right moments and the bridge leading to a slow, high note guitar solo just makes everything a little bit sadder. A long drawn out guitar solo, over the top bellowing of a sad line that can apply to multiple types of love, and 10 cans of hairspray. Cinderella had much more than just this song and don't know what you've got till it's gone. Yeah, I promise I'm never singing that song after you leave. Ding dong, the witch is dead is more appropriate. Number 6. You wouldn't think love songs in a good or bad light when you think of a punk rock band known for fighting the system. Rise Against is a band that knows how to get a point across though, so if you are going to be singing about heartbreak and questioning love, then you better believe they will go all out to make sure that message is delivered. Forgiveness after a breakup is difficult, and sometimes it can feel painful from how much emotion goes through it. Tim McElrath wrote something special here, Wild Rise Against made an absolute banger of a song that is arguably their most recognizable track. McElrath said that while normally filling out words to the vocal sounds he wants to go along with the music, the phrase, I don't hate you, being sang repeatedly stuck out to him when writing Savior. Everything came together better than I think anyone could have predicted, with some of the best written verses written on forgiveness after a breakup all sung fast and fluidly. There is a ton of emotion in this song and what happens after the romantic side of love falls away. It's a part of life. Rise Against nails it here, and on top of that, this song still pumps people up and gets everyone to sing along at a moment's notice. Never has breaking up and trying to forgive someone sounded so awesome. Number 5 After the grunge scene hit, love songs really started becoming scarce as the subject matter didn't always fit the scene. After Nirvana, however, Dave Grohl and company pushed forward into the alt-rock and post-grunge world with an energetic rock song all about falling for someone. Be 
The reason for Everlong making this list is not only because of it being a fantastic rock song and one of the standout tracks from the 90s, but also because as a love song, it's extremely easy to relate with. It's when you totally become mesmerized with someone that they complete you and to the point where it makes everything perfect. In Girl's own words, that song's about a girl that I had fallen in love with and it was basically about being connected to someone so much that not only do you love them physically and spiritually, but when you sing along with them, you harmonize perfectly. You want to be with someone so much that you are willing to go further in your life than you ever had before because you know they are the one for you. That is an intense feeling that's described perfectly in Everlong's chorus. Many people have their own favorite Foo Fighters songs, but I feel like Everlong is their most iconic, and for good reason. As a rock song itself, it's a classic from the 90s. As a love song, it's something special that I think puts words to feelings we have where we want to be with someone in every way, and it's exhilarating. If I let you keep that Foo Fighters shirt, will you leave and never come back? You know what? You keep it. You wearing it probably made it all stanky. In fact, I'm gonna call you Stanky from now on. Number four. This is an instance of the music itself making the song stand out more because, well, that's what Led Zeppelin does. Lyrically, Whole Lot of Love isn't exactly a sonnet filled with every romantic expression ever thought, but the simple message it gives of wanting someone physically while giving some of the best riffs ever to define that generation of sound at the end of the 60s really makes something special. When people say that the time of the late 60s was the spawn of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, well, yeah, they were right. But then there were some great things to come out of it like Zeppelin and Whole Lot of Love. Hearing a song in the psychedelic realm of rock and having it be about the physical side of love is a perfect recipe. It's easy to imagine a couple swaying together outside at a concert while this song is blasting out their eardrums. Robert Plant is in his element of letting loose in his singing and is caught up in the moment. Jimmy Page's echo effects with the guitar is striking but not over the top. Everything is metered out perfectly and you get all the elements in the right doses. It sucks you in fast like a vacuum and you are caught singing along with the feeling of drooling over someone because you're so infatuated. Classic rock has an edge over many of the different subgenres of rock in our current generation, and one of them is that they knew how to get any emotion out of throughout the standard rock style. No backtracks, no synthesizers, no gimmicks. Just a band and their talent getting across the physical allure of love. Led Zeppelin gets that point across with style. Happy Valentine's Day. You ungrateful, heartless monster. Number three. For me, U2 is a band that either knocks it out of the park with a huge hit, or swings away, misses, loses control of the bat, and hits the mascot standing by the dugout. In the late 80s and early 90s, U2 was making hits of all kinds. They were inescapable for good reasons. The Irishman based a song around acoustics and American gospel music. Bono wrote a song based around the line, I still haven't found what I'm looking for, that he remembered reading years ago. This is not only about struggling to find love, but it's also on a spiritual level to feel complete. Yearning to be with someone that makes you feel whole and elevates you to a higher level. As a song, the rhythm really is the star, and while U2 may not always be my thing, I can't deny how great everything comes together here. The Edge's guitar and Bono's harmony really make this song gorgeous. I totally get the arguments of With or Without You or Sweetest Thing, but what makes I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For one of the best is the music behind it. The build-up and range for over four minutes just flies by, and it's a testament to the talent that you two have for not having to stick around to the same old format in their music, especially back in their Joshua Tree heyday. The search for love as a tangible goal with someone is not a topic that's easily expressed, but Dublin Superstar has found a way, and they nailed it.
number two. Everyone gives praise to Queen for their pump-up anthems to Bohemian Rhapsody. Part of it is because of the greatest vocalist ever, Freddie Mercury. A Night at the Opera is one of my favorite albums ever, so I admit my bias, but there is something special about You're My Best Friend. As a song, Mercury just grinds almost effortlessly, and Deacon even learned to use an electric keyboard to add that desired sound. Even though Mercury wasn't crazy about it, I think it fits really well here to make it instantly identifiable. It's not just about romance, but a true connection. Not only someone you love and are attracted to, but completely depend on when which you want to be attached at the hip. Written by bassist John Deacon for his wife, it really captures those feelings of love and companionship perfectly. It's hard to explain, but so many love songs both in and out of rock focus solely on either the romantic connection or physical attraction. This one goes further than that and adds the piece of human connection. You're making me live. There is so much in that statement alone. I know some people might prefer Love of My Life from the same album, but I feel in all the areas of love and as a testament of John Deacon to his wife, it all just makes it much more special. Number one. Something in the way she moves. It doesn't matter how much you might think this is a safe choice or an easy answer, something still reigns as the sincerest love song that really captures the emotion of affection while being musically sound. This was years after the boy band stage of the Beatles and when they really got into making actual music. Written by George Harrison about his wife Patty Boy to be included on Abbey Road, I feel this song is his greatest work ever written for the Beatles. The bass and piano are so prominent in this song and Harrison's voice is as smooth as it gets. You're asking me There are stories about the inspiration and dual meaning of the song including doubt, working through feelings, and even being directed towards Hindu gods. It can't be stressed enough though that this is a love song in its greatest representation from a man to the woman he loves, inspired by everything she does. Something has been covered by some of the greatest musicians ever including Elvis, Frank Sinatra, Ray Charles, Eric Clapton, and many more. Love can make a man nervous when you are so completely taken with someone and the song Something captures those feelings. A track that's just over three minutes Minutes, captures a lifetime of emotion you can have over someone special. Something in the way she knows And all I have to do is think of her The Beatles were the biggest thing in the world at one point, but it wasn't until the late 60s where I think they really started changing the world for the better with their music. George Harrison written songs weren't always numerous on the Beatles albums, but when they were featured, they shined. And one of them, I feel, is the best love song ever. And that was a look at the top 10 best love songs in rock. What do you think is the best love song that has ever been made in rock in all its subgenres? Leave a comment below and let everyone know what you think. Huge thanks to my patrons. Please check out my Patreon if you want to help keep rocks going and to contribute. Please subscribe so you can keep up to date with the new albums coming out and more. You can check out my concert photography on Instagram and you can follow Rocked on Facebook and Twitter.